Hello and welcome to A Priori Storytime Less. Today we'll be reading from book Tales of the Taoist Immortals <coughs> by Ava Wong. And we've opened to chapter 13, haven't we? Dolphin and Orca. <coughs> I'll let you tuck in here with me so you can hear. And uh, <coughs> this starts with, uh, it's titled The Old One, or Lao Tzu, which is a way we might translate the term Lao Tzu, the, the title Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu's name was originally Li Er. The legends say that on the night he was conceived, his mother saw an infant wrapped by the sun, moon, and clouds. On the morning of his birth, three suns rose from the east, and after he suckled, magic water came out of the mouths of nine dragons. Lear was an extraordinary child. At three, his body radiated a golden glow. At five, he gazed at the sun and smiled and looked at the moon and sighed. At seven, he learned to swallow the rays of the sun, moon, and stars. Not interested in becoming a statesman, Lear did not seek employment in the courts of the feudal states. Instead, he was content to work in the imperial library where he could read and study the ancient rites and rituals. <coughs> One time, a young scholar named Kung Chung Ni came to the library to ask Lear about an obscure ritual. Gong Chung Ni would later be known as Kung Su or Confucius. After answering the young man's questions, Lear told him, you need to file down your sharpness and put away your sword of ambition. The great sage often appears dull and dim-witted and those with true learning do not display their knowledge. Years later, Chung Ni would recall this meeting and say, Birds soar above the earth. Fishes swim to the depths of the oceans and tigers run the great expanse of the plains. But who can predict the behavior of dragons? Sometimes they fly among the clouds and sometimes they tunnel beneath the earth. Lao Tzu must have been a dragon. You could catch a glimpse of his wisdom, but if you tried to grasp it, it was gone. <coughs> Lao Tzu retired from the civil service not long after Chung Ni's visit. He traveled west and at a border town near Han Ku Pass, dictated a treatise on the Tao and virtue to a man named Wen Shi. This book became known as the Tao Te Ching. It was said that Lao Tzu continued to travel west after leaving Han Ku Pass. Eventually, he climbed up Mount Kunlun and entered the immortal lands. Thank you.